the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Holy Spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. O God, you have instructed the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant it to the same Holy Spirit. May always be truly wise, rejoice in his consolation. To the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Santo Nino de Cebu, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening. Our spiritual reading for tonight will be on the life of Blessed Alexandrina Dacosca. And she is considered by Sister Lucia as the fourth seer of Fatima. Now, why did I choose this topic? You know, after this uh, COVID-19 lockdown, a lot of people, they are suffering. They almost lost everything. And they're going to start from scratch. When you're suffering, you know, you feel very pitiful. And we get very angry, we start complaining. We rebel against everyone. And yet, these are unnecessary, you know. If we only know that suffering is also loved by God for a higher reason. And John Paul II, in his Albi Pichi Dolores, said in 1985, Salvi Dolores means salvific pain, that all sufferings after the death of Christ on the cross is salvific, and it can make us saints. With the suffering we experienced during this COVID-19, most of us would have been great saints, like Saint Teresa of Babila, Saint John of the Cross, Saint Teresa of La Choux, or Saint Rose of Lima. And yet we look at ourselves, we're still miserable. And perhaps worse than anybody else. What is it that we wasted? We wasted the opportunity. We did not see the value of suffering. And here we have Blessed Alexandrina da Koska, a simple lady who just stayed one and a half year in school. And the rest of her life, at the age of nine, she started working as a farm girl. And then, of course, when she got sick because of the cruel master, she took sewing together with her sister, Deolinda, for a living until the incident happened that made her suffer like many of us suffering. But what is the difference? She suffered so much, we suffered so much. We are not saints, she became a great saint. All right, just a little background of Alexandrina de Koska. She was born in 1904, March 30, in Balasar. This is roughly around 200 kilometers from Fatima. She's best known as a mystic and victim soul, a member of the Association of the Salesians Cooperator. She died on October 13, 1955, and beatified by John Paul II in 2004. 
who cited her secret to holiness was her genuine love of God through suffering. Through suffering. As a young girl, Alexandrina, through the pious guidance of her mother, she loves to pray. So the importance of parents of initiating your children to pray. And she studied her faith. Well, as long as she learned a little bit of reading and writing, and she could understand the Bible, the catechism, that was enough. With the tutorship of the mother, she learned her faith very well. And she also loves to sing religious songs. And what was implanted by the mother to her was, together with the other daughter, Deolinda, is dedication to work for the love of God. So you see, at an early age, she made the right path. Great athletes are because at an early age, they were started correctly. Great saints, they become because they were initiated correctly by parents. So you see how important parents are. As a young girl, she loves to contemplate creation and enjoys singing for the Lord because she has a great passion for singing. She receives this gift of good voice from the Lord. Being poor, naturally she was forced to work. A terrible event occurred that transformed her entire life. It was 1918. Alexandrina and her friend, Rosalinda, while they were taking sewing lessons from her older sister, Diolinda, her former employer in the farm and two men forced themselves in her house and wanted to commit immoral acts with them. Alexandrina got her rosary and cried out, Jesus, help me. And to protect her purity, God impelled her to jump out of the window 13 feet high or 4 meters high. And she landed badly on the ground. Her spinal column was badly damaged and was irreparable. Still, she was able to rise up, got a piece of wood, big enough, heavy enough that she can carry, and went back to the room and used it to drive away all the evil people, to protect the purity of her sister and her good friend. With the help of God, she was able to frighten these evil people and they were saved from their purity. And she said later on, I'm ready to die for my purity because it is my love for God. How I wish, you know, our younger generation will read her life. With sex education, you know, purity is given so cheaply for no purpose except promiscuity, which is so bad. And that's not what God wants us to use with our sex. Sex is only for married people. When she had that kind of broken spine, which was damaged, her legs finally got paralyzed in less than two years. And she was bedridden. The only thing she can do is to move her hands and her head. But the feet, totally useless. So she prayed so hard for healing. And she even made a promise to the Lord that if she gets healed, 
she will enter the convent and serve the Lord the best she could. But that was not the will of God. God has something better for her. Until one day the Lord God made her understand that her vocation was to suffer for love of God, to collaborate with Jesus in saving souls. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 17, as we found in Salvi Pichi Dolores of John Paul II. If you share the cross of Christ, you will also share the glory of Christ. Confided in her bed, through the help of her spiritual director, she learned how to offer her pains as reparation for the love of God, for the conversion of sinners. The problem with most of us is that we are wasting the energy of suffering. We say that the wasted energy, most wasted energy here on earth is water or the sunlight, or some say electricity, or others they say gasoline. But I could say also, one of the most wasted energy is suffering or the daily cross that the Lord God allows us to carry. Why is this so? Because everybody has it. And yet very few know how to utilize it for the glory of God and the salvation of souls. As Jesus assured us, the only way to sanctification, the only way to heaven is by way of the cross. There is no other way. And as I said at the beginning, during this COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown, how much sufferings were wasted. Wasted because they were not offered to God for the salvation of souls. Wasted because they were not harnessed to be salvific. Wasted because perhaps nobody taught us how to utilize our suffering and nobody ever told us that suffering is salvific. Although God cannot really will directly nor indirectly evil, yet by permissive will, He allows evil to happen so that something good will come out of it. As Catechism of the Catholic Church Compendium, year 2005 said, with the record high of 15 months house lockdown due to COVID-19 pandemic, many got sick, lost their loved ones, lost their jobs, their savings. Worst of all, in many countries, a lot of Catholics lost their state of sanctifying grace because no priests are available to go to confession and celebrate Mass as they are threatened under big fine and incarceration if they violate state ordinances. If people in these places die in mortal sin with no priest allowed to minister, the worst loss could happen and did happen to miss heaven for eternity. And that means to go to hell. Yet, if all peoples did know that as John Paul II in Salvi Pichi Dolores, his apostolic letter in 1985 said that all sufferings are salvific, after the passion and death of Jesus on the cross. If embraced without complaint for love of God and for the remission of sins, and in union with the passion and death of our Lord, many would become saints by now. But there is nothing to dismay. We still have a lot of chances to make up for what we lost by starting now our reparation and victimhood while the COVID-19 or any calamity for that matter are still around us. Moreover, we are in the liturgical season of Lent, which is a season of grace, when God exhorts us to pray and do sacrifice for the remission of the sins of mankind in union with the passion and death of the one mediator, Jesus Christ. To our fasting, prayer, and suffering, we can begin now to make reparation for the love of God in union with the passion and death of Jesus, the one mediator, for the conversion of sinners. In addition, when any suffering, be it physical, moral, material, mental, psychological, spiritual, afflict us, 
let us remember that these are golden opportunities God allows to happen to enable us to collaborate with the one mediator Jesus Christ for the conversion of sinners and also remission of our sins. Now, this is the crux of the matter. Although suffering is naturally obnoxious, and as Benedict XVI said in his instruction on healing, year 2000, that we ordinarily do not like suffering because it connotes punishment. And moreover, we have the right to live a happy life. So, we dislike suffering. However, Benedict XVI said that if suffering is understood properly as salvific for love of God, our cross will not only bring salvation of souls, but also heavenly bliss called ecstasy that will make us the happiest even while here on earth. The challenge therefore is for each one of us to learn fast how to make use of our suffering or our daily crosses to obtain ocean of graces, save souls, convert sinners, sanctify our lives, cast out Satan, and glorify God. As a preliminary, we can learn from Saints Francesco Marto, Jacinta Marto, and Sister Lucia dos Santos of Fatima, who were shown by Our Lady on July 13, 1917, the existence of hell and how many souls were going to hell. Mother Mary seriously lamented, many souls go to hell because no one prays and offers sacrifices for them. Then in another occasion, Our Lady of Fatima remarked, there are more souls in hell because of impurity than any other sin. The three shepherdess were taught earlier by the angel of Portugal in 1916 the simple way of channeling this wasted energy of sufferings into acts of reparation for the love of God and for the conversion of sinners. Now, why did I mention this? Because Alexandrina da Cosca said she learned after her confessors as well as from Jacinta and Francesco, the way how to utilize suffering in order to save souls and to experience the ecstasy of the Lord. The prayer when one is suffering is simply this, for love of you, Lord Jesus, I offer my sufferings as a reparation for the salvation of sinners. Since these three young children of Fatima, after seeing hell, where many poor sinners who are unrepentant of their sins go, right after their death and judgment, they frequently practice what was taught them by Our Lady of Fatima, to offer sacrifices, that is, their sufferings, motivated for love of God as an act of reparation, in union with the infinite merits of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The key to the understanding of the salvific value of suffering is the conviction in our hearts that the cross or suffering is the only way to heaven, the eternal bliss and sanctification, and above all, the only way to share the greatest act of love of Christ, for his father and mankind. Remember John chapter 15, verse 13. No greater love a man has than to give up his life for his friend. But this is the greatest act of Christ's love found in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. While you were still his enemies, Christ already died for love of you. So that means while we are willing to die for our friends, that is just the greater. The greatest is when we are willing to die for our persecutors, for those who will kill us, for those who torture us, as many saints did. When Sister Lucia, Saint Jacinta, 
and Francesco saw the Virgin Mary, by God's grace, allowed the rays of light coming from her immaculate heart and palm in her hands, penetrate their hearts. They testified. They were interiorly transformed. So this is the secret. We must get first the love of God. It is a gift. And of course, God wants to share this love for us. If we are willing, of course, to accept the consequences. So when they saw the Virgin Mary and the rays of light coming from her immaculate heart and from the palm of her hands, that's their hearts. They testified they saw God. And when they saw God, they experienced full joy. And they were transformed, supernaturalized, divinized. They had radical conversion and they were never the same again. This time with love coming into their hearts, they're no longer scared of anything else. Alexandrina da Cosca, whom Sister Lucia rightly called the fourth seer of Fatima, can teach us likewise how to make reparation for the conversion of many sinners, to bring them to the real eternal home, heaven, and prevent them from going to hell. When she was bedridden, she found herself all the time alone and in great pain. When in great pain, it was natural for her to complain, like us. We also complain when we have sufferings. She promised to enter the convent if she get healed and prayed fervently together with her family for a miracle to cure her from her paralysis. But to no avail, God has a different plan for her. Until in 1933, that was 13 years after she was bedridden, God sent her as spiritual director, Father Mariano Peño. He told her not to waste her sufferings by complaining, but accept it with full surrender to the will of God and offer it for the love of God. And in union with the passion and death of the one mediator Jesus as an act of reparation for the remission of her temporal punishment due to her sins and for the salvation of poor sinners. Alexandrina tried very hard, but found it very difficult to stop complaining. For the pains she was enduring were so excruciating to the point that even the slightest movement in her hand and head would put her in great agony. Her mission was about to begin when Father Pino celebrated the first Mass for Alexandrina since her accident. She recalled, with that first Mass, she said afterwards, our Lord began to increase her tenderness towards me, and at the same time, the weight of my cross, because he blessed me with a grace which in his goodness is never lacking to me. So that last line, because of the grace that she received, when you see God, you are totally different. And that was the beginning of the great mysterious sanctification of Alexandrina. At the same time, so many miracles happening. It was this supernatural grace from God that finally she was able to bear her pains with love of God and conversion of sinners. So for us, we might still be in the process of, you know, trying to struggle on how to accept the suffering as a reparation because perhaps we did not have yet that encounter with God wherein God reveals his love to us and hits us in the heart. Perhaps because we don't really know how to pray. We don't know how to keep silent. We don't know how to have the solitude. So this is where we have to work hard. The silence, the solitude, so that we can encounter Christ in our prayer, 
face to face and with that rays of light coming from Jesus, that's our heart, then suffering becomes salvific. It will no longer be as excruciating and as obnoxious as it used to be. It will become even so sweet that we would even desire for it. And as we see it here with Alexandrina. After the first Mass, Alexandrina said, Jesus arrived. She appeared to me in natural dimensions. That means as you see a human being. But of course, he's not just a human being. He's God-man. As if he had just been taken down from the cross. I could see deep open wounds in his hands, his feet and his side. The blood streamed from these wounds and from the breast it came with such force that after having drenched the garment around the waist, it blooded onto the floor. Jesus drew near to the edge of my bed. With great love, I was able to kiss the wounds in his hands and I longed to kiss those in his feet. But due to paralysis, I was unable to do so. Though I had nothing, I said nothing of this desire. Jesus knew what was in my mind. And with his hands, he, helped, he held up one foot and then the other and offered them to me to kiss. Enraptured, ecstatic, I contemplated the wounds in his side and the blood that was gushing from it until filled with compassion, I threw myself in his arms and cried out, Oh my Jesus, how much you have suffered for me. I remained in his arms for some moments and finally Jesus disappeared. So this was the first encounter with love that changed her totally. Love that dispels all fear. Love that is stronger than death. This sublime vision left an indelible impression on Alexandrina. Even many years later, its memory was so vivid and it still seemed to be visible. But, as usual, this is the ways of the Lord, you know. When you have that first encounter of ecstasy, since God is infinite, you want more. So what happened? Every encounter brings her ecstatic love and at once a deeper longing for suffering. So the greater the love, the greater you want to suffer. As if for Jesus to love is to suffer and to make reparation. In fact, in 1933, she said, Alexandrina said, in the night from Saturday to Sunday, I do not know what passed through my head. I was sleeping and I awoke. I seemed to die. This strange phenomenon lasted but a short while, but it repeated itself often. I think it was caused by my backbone. I hope our Lord listens to me, but his will be done. Very open I ask, oh my Jesus, what do you wish me to do? On March 28, 1933, the Lord appeared to her with great beauty and being ecstatic. Jesus told her, suffer, love, and make reparation. So for her, the three things become one. When I love, I love to suffer. When I love, I love to make reparation. Why is it that we don't make reparation? Why is it that we hate suffering? Simply because we don't have love. We are not yet touched by that love of God. Our prayer life is so erratic that in our encounter with God, we simply are doing a lot of bubbling, but we are not really praying. And so when we don't have meditation, we don't have reflection, we don't have that face-to-face -face encounter with the Lord, so that love of God will never be our property, we could say. That love of God will never touch our heart and will never change us for good. 
relying on the grace of God to love and to suffer become even a consolation to Alexandrina, knowing that Jesus is pleased with it. So when you love somebody, you just want to please this somebody. And what is it that pleased Jesus? Suffering, so that we can share in his salvific mission of saving souls. Alexandrina said, Blessed be the Lord who has called me into this world in order to suffer and to bear so many tribulations. To all this I unite many sins which grieve me more than anything else. I ask every day for suffering. Could you imagine that? Asking every day for suffering. I receive a lot of letters from many of our covenanted members and even our members of the Alliance the Holy Family. They're all asking me, Please, Father, pray to God to stop my suffering. And here is Alexandrina who is in love with God, who has received the love of God. Please give me more sufferings. So, simply put, why do people hate suffering? Unfortunately, they haven't yet reached that love of God. There is something wrong with our prayer life. And she continued, I ask every day for suffering, and I feel great spiritual consolation when I suffer more. Could you imagine that? When you suffer more, you have more consolation. For us, what happens? When we suffer more, we have more anxieties, we have more headaches, and we are, get, we are more impatient and irritable. Hmm? Because God is not with us. That's why we react this way. But if the love of God is there, we are totally different. However, there are things that cost me so much, but God's will, not mine, be done. This was December 30, 1933. Of course, after another consolation, she was allowed to suffer more. This time, she could not eat anything, and her nourishment was just on the Eucharist. We remember Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Not by bread alone does man live, but by the word of God. On September 6, 1934, Alexandrina experienced another extraordinary ecstasy in which the compassionate voice of Christ seemed to invite her to draw closer to his sacred heart and share in the intense fire of his redeeming pain. So there is so much fire, there is so much love in the intense pain of Jesus. Give me your hands because I want to nail them with mine. Give me your feet because I want to nail them to my feet. Give me your head because I want to crown it with thorns as they did to me. Give me your heart because I want to pierce it with a lance as they pierce mine. Consecrate your body to me. Offer yourself totally to me. Help me in the redemption of mankind. After this experience, she had what we call stigmata and crown of thorns. Two hands sighed, but she begged to make it invisible. So there was a time when Father Mariano arrived and she was bleeding profusely in the head. And Father Mariano said, where did the blood come from? And Alexandrina said, Father, I have to tell you this. I now have the crown of thorns. It's invisible, but uh, it's there. I asked the Lord to make it invisible. And Father Mariano said, Oh, now I understand why there are so many souls saved, converted, healed, delivered from diabolical infestation because of your suffering in union with the passion death of Jesus. Anna Alexandrina generously consented to the request of Jesus. Starting 1934, God permitted Alexandrina to be attacked by the devil that brought her several contortions and sufferings. As if to say, the more you love, the more you want suffering. And when you have experience of ecstasy, you still want more suffering. And so this time, it was the devil who will make her suffer. 
And during the ecstasy, Jesus told her, My daughter, suffering's the key to heaven. So we have the key to heaven. Do you have the key to heaven yet? If you don't have suffering, you don't have the key. You may have the suffering, but it's not the key yet. Why? Because we are complaining. Because you don't have the love. Because we are not praying properly. Because we hate prayer, which is our face-to-face -face encounter with the Lord every day. I've endured so much to open heaven to all mankind, Jesus said. But for many, it was in vain. Could you imagine that? For 4,000 years, Adam and Eve closed heaven, open hell. And after Jesus arrived, when he died on the cross, he opened heaven. But what did he say? I have endured so much to open heaven to all mankind. But for many, it was in vain. They say, I want to enjoy life. I have come into the world only for enjoyment. And what is Jesus telling us? The best enjoyment in this life, the best promiscuous pleasure you experience in this life, they are not even an iota to the ecstasy you experience when you love God. That's why what a waste of life. God did not create us to be promiscuous. We have souls. We are not only bodies. We have souls. And so we have to nourish both. And many times when we give in to promiscuity, we are nourishing our body and our soul wrongly. Instead of being happy after doing all these things, what happened to us? Tremendous headache. Not to mention the fact that we have mental disorder. Because we are doing something which God does not want. And so we get cursed. And when we get cursed, whatever we do, we pretend we are happy. We take drugs to be happy. We smoke marijuana to pretend to be happy. We are not happy. Chemical happiness is not happiness. The real happiness is the happiness that comes from God, from the heart. So Jesus said, they say, I want to enjoy life. I have come into the world only for enjoyment. They say, hell does not exist. I have died for them. And they say, they did not ask me to do so. They have formed heresies against me. In order to save them, I select certain souls and lay the cross on their shoulders. Happy the soul who understands the value of suffering. My cross is sweet if carried for love of me. I chose you from your mother's womb. I watched over you in your great difficulties. It was I who chose them from you that I might have a victim to offer me much reparation. Lean on my sacred heart and find therein the strength to suffer everything. In 1938, after Jesus underwent several stations of the cross using Alexandrina's paralyzed body in her small room, witnessed by as much as 6,000 people per day, accompanied by many priests and sisters, Our Lady of Fatima, in her Immaculate Heart, told her to ask Pius XII to consecrate the word to her Immaculate Heart to end World War II because of the sufferings of Alexandrina. God's chastisement ended. She was able to appease God's wrath, and God is willing to relent. After the consecration in 1942, repeated three times, World War II suddenly ended. The more superior Nazi forces suffered great losses from the Allied forces. In all the seven army divisions that compelled Hitler to surrender, and eventually, when he could not take the brunt of his loss, he committed suicide. And yet he was using already missiles, he was already using jet fighters. All his tanks, his uh, 
battleships, they are far, far superior than the Allied forces. But if God is with us, who is against us? If God is not with us, what can we do? And if Hitler was not with God, what happened? He collapsed. Those who visited Alexandrina, asking even to, for her advice, were greatly nourished spiritually. And countless sick people were healed just by the simple prayer of Alexandrina. As St. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, For the damned, the cross is foolishness and a stumbling block. But for those who are redeemed, the cross means wisdom and power. What wisdom? To be able to lift the heart that is desperate, that has lost its faith. Power. What power? To heal the sick, to cast out the devil, to convert the most hardened sinners. That was the power and the wisdom given to Alexandrina. Because she loves, she wants to suffer, to love more. And she wants to make reparation to the salvation of souls, to please God out of love for Him. Priests, nuns, monsignores, bishops, politicians, kings, princes, queens, pagans, name it, they all line up to ask for advice from this simple girl who did not even finish elementary. She did not even have the high school education. Only one and a half year in school. And she is advising theologians, advising learned priests and bishops. Why? The wisdom is no longer her wisdom. It is the wisdom that comes from God. And this goes only with the cross. We love Jesus. We'll also love the cross. From March 27, 1942, the new pace of life of Alexandrina emerged. Wherein for 13 more years until her death, she would only survive on Holy Communion. Concerning her living on the Eucharist, Jesus told her in an ecstasy, You will not take food again on earth. Your food will be my flesh. Your blood will be my divine blood. Your life will be my life. You receive it from me when I unite my heart to your heart. So in the alliance of the heart, we are able to unite our heart with Jesus. What is this heart? It is the Eucharist. It becomes our nourishment. So do not fear, my daughter. Medical doctors remained baffled at this phenomenon and thus began various tests on Alexandrina, acting in a very cold and hostile way towards her. This increased her suffering and humiliation. But she remembered the words of Jesus. You will be very rarely received. And you will have no consolation here on earth. I want that while your heart is filled with suffering, on your lips there is only a smile. So what is our conclusion? Let us not waste the suffering we are experiencing because of this COVID-19 pandemic. We can be always complaining, you know, so irritable, so impatient, so restless. These are not necessary. We have heard enough. We can learn. We can start today. Pray well. Keep your silence. Ask humbly the Lord to give you that love. And when you have that love, then when you have the grace, the love that dispels all fear, the love that's stronger than death, then it is easy to accept all the sufferings and you would have become a great saint. And not only you, but all the members of your family, because through your suffering, you can use it as a reparation for the conversion of sinners. Alexandrina the Koska, could you imagine? She stopped World War II with her reparation. And what about the millions of souls that were supposed to go to hell, but because of her reparation, she stopped. 
and brought them instead to the kingdom of heaven. So if all of us in all the countries afflicted by the COVID-19, we would only utilize our suffering as salvific, then we would not have World War III. We will be the happiest persons in the whole world. We'll be all saints, and we will all be going to the kingdom of heaven, because the only way to heaven is by way of the cross through suffering, in union with the passion and death of the one we gave to Jesus Christ. God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.